Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar we'll then run for the UK Met Office run have a look at the precipitation and temperature over the next five days we've got a, a lot of mixed conditions could be seeing some very warm maybe even hot weather in the south and the east at times but we'll also be seeing some more unsettled conditions further northwards and westwards and a fair share of cooler more average like conditions uh, it has been very warm the last few weeks july has been a very hot month so far and it does look like for some it will be ending back more towards average or in the cool notes we'll then have a look at the gfs gm east mwf and the ensembles see what we're going to be expecting for the start of august now for the last few videos we have been saying that there's the potential of it staying very warm and dry now in the loss of 24 36 hours we're starting to see a trend perhaps of some precipitation in the start of august it's nothing major but we're seeing the the likelihood now increasing of a small little low pressure system running in off the atlantic a little bit further southwards than the current track is and this could give some precipitation to the south. Now it looks like it could engage with some very warm air, uh, again keeping things quite warm, hot, and it could be quite a big sort of thundery system that we could be seeing. So could we be seeing thunderstorms bring an end to this real dry spell? Now of course we have seen a bit of precipitation recently, but nothing major. So yeah, could these thunderstorms we could be seeing in you know, around a week's time potentially bring some much needed rainfall to all across many areas of England and Wales. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now if you look at the United Kingdom look on the live radar at the moment, you can see it is pretty dry for most areas. A few showers through central areas, through central southern England, through the Midlands, and some heavier showers perhaps across Yorkshire and the far north and north uh, northwest. Scotland as well has a few showers, but generally most areas are dry. Quite a lot of cloud around today as we do have a cooler northerly breeze which is a little bit more unsettled so we're seeing a bit more cloud popping up here or there but still some brighter spells some sunshine for a few areas but it's generally a cooler day uh, and a lot more uh, a lot more cloudy out there as well now we just have to contrast that to a week ago today temperatures peaking around 21 maybe 22 maybe even i say 23 degrees today but widely that 18 to 22 degree range which is generally average maybe even slightly below average for some today but remember this time last week we were seeing temperatures uh top out at 40 degrees so you can see the big contrast of conditions we were 15 to 20 degrees above average in most areas this time last week and we're now back towards average maybe a degree or two below average it's pretty ridiculous how these temperatures have swung and if we do have a look at the temperatures at around half two you can see how it's mostly just yellows and oranges which is if you have a look at the uh, color gradient around mid to high teens low 20s that sort of conditions we are seeing at the moment you can still see it is pretty warm across europe but you can see quite a distinct cold front there and that is because atlantic air is spreading through most of northern and western europe at the moment after that intense plume of hot air that spread through the uk this time last week spread eastwards it does look like it will turn warmer across europe over the next sort of few days and that will tap into the south of the united kingdom as well but for the time being it is still looking temperatures around average generally for northern and western europe over the next day or two so if we do have a look at the ukv see what that is showing over the next uh, five days look at precipitation and temperature now you can see those showers that have spread through this afternoon you can see they're popping up and not quite as intense uh, as the ukv is making them out to be in reality especially across scotland and across central southern england they're very patchy they could pop up a little bit over the course of this afternoon but at the moment we're just seeing some lighter rain nothing too significant at all as we head through to wednesday we see some more showers break out a bit more sunshine so a bit more convection taking off but it's around 9 10 11 a.m seeing quite a bit of instability and these real small but could be quite heavy pop-up showers no thunderstorms or anything with this just small convective showers could give a few millimeters of rain here or there and if you are stuck under one you will know about it but you could equally be 10 miles away and in some nice uh end of july sunshine the showers do look like they will fade away in the afternoon, still lingering in a few areas, but uh, being a little bit smaller and less intense, and cloud will be plentiful. So it does look quite cloudy the next day or two. Sunny spells will be there, but it's not going to be predominantly sunny like we have had recently. 
as we head through to Thursday, a bit of persistent rain developing in the north of England. Again, hopefully we would see this further southwards, but we're not uh, across northern England. So if you could wake up on Thursday across North England, it could be quite soggy there. But by the afternoon, that area of instability is moving northwards, could produce some heavy showers, maybe some thunderstorms across North England and southern Scotland, but nothing too major at this stage. Elsewhere, though, still pretty dry. As we head through Friday afternoon, still a few showers here or there, a bit more sunnier weather, but still, again, pretty dry. And as we head through to Saturday, weather fronts start to approach from the west, but again, predominantly giving its precipitation across the north and west, where we have seen some de decent precipitation over the last couple of days, and the rainfall deficit we have had there has quite significantly been reduced for many areas in Scotland and Northern Ireland and even as parts of northwest England now are not at particularly dangerously low levels similar to areas further southwards and eastwards. Again we see reports today that trout conditions could be declared if we do head into August next couple of weeks though we see a lot of precipitation but as we see in this video there is a decent chance now we do see something and some, that something could be pretty significant. But by Saturday afternoon into the evening, it doesn't look like predominantly those showers will be in the north and the west, but you couldn't rule out a couple in the south and the east. Now, if you have a look at those max temperatures, they are going to be very much up and down over the next few days. You can see temperatures today peaking around that 20 to 22 degree range, but widely 18 to 20, maybe 21, 22, as I said. As we head towards Wednesday, you can see those temperatures rising, maybe slightly higher, maybe 23, 24 in a few areas, but widely, once again, 17, 18, 19 degrees, peaking around 20, 21 in a few areas. As we head into Thursday, again, very similar, slightly warmer day in the south and east, maybe getting up towards 24, 25 degrees, so getting around slightly above average, elsewhere 18 to 22. And you can see by Friday afternoon, more widely warmer day, dragging out some much warmer air in off the south and southwest. Temperatures peaking around 27, maybe 28 degrees in the far south, widely low to mid 20s back towards if not above average and by saturday it could be a pretty warm day in a few areas in the far southeast 27 28 degrees but with that atlantic systems approaching from the northwest it could bring cooler conditions with that precipitation and we just have to see exactly how far south and east was that cooler air does get uh, as you have a look at the upper air temperatures you can see that cold front pretty well defined there around one or two degrees at 850 hpa out in the atlantic sweeping in giving precipitation but the far south and east could hold on to this hotter air uh, this warmer air for the whole period and this is why the continued signal is it to be warm and dry in the south as this cooler more unsettled condition doesn't quite reach the south but as we'll see with the GFS in a minute, there is a possibility we see this low track through in the first couple of days of August, bringing more widespread precipitation in terms of convective activity and maybe thunderstorms. So if we do have a look at the GFS run, you can see at the moment we've got a northerly flow. High pressure building in, so those showers are reducing, especially from the west. But under higher pressure, cooler air mass is going to be around average sort of conditions as we saw from the UKV there. Beyond that, though, low pressure is arriving from the Atlantic, and by Friday, Saturday time, it does sweep through. Again, not a particularly vigorous low, but just some cooler Atlantic air, and that's why we saw by the precipitation charts. There's nothing too crazy, but just some more showers um, and precipitation. High pressure does build in temporarily, but it's this low here that we've got to watch. It's sort of coming under the flow, a bit further southwards, and we've generally been seeing lows the last few weeks, if not the last month or so, and it is tracking towards southern England. It's sort of a a sliding low pressure system turning potentially even into a channel low there and what we'll get with that with the winds coming around the low in an anti-clockwise direction we'd start to drag up some very warm air into this low pressure system you see the 10 degree ice foam gets wrapped into it but also this hotter air will be feeding into it at different levels on the atmosphere and this could give quite heavy thundery outbreaks as the low moves through. And you can see the centre of the low is moving through central England maybe northern England and it will give a widespread rash of instability, precipitation, and as, as I said, could be some intense precipitation in the form of thundery weather within it. Again, it's around eight, nine days time, so it's difficult to say exactly what we'll see with it, but from what we're looking at the charts at the moment, and as we'll see the ensembles in a minute, there is quite a decent chance we see this sort of system move through, and it's just the intensity and exact track of it which will decide how widespread the rainfall is and then how intense it will be, and so whether it will give a proper soaking or just a few hit and miss showers. 
Beyond that, high pressure does build back in and we go back into temperatures around average and high pressure stays in control. So it doesn't look like it's a solution to this dry spell. It does look like it could be a slight respite, giving a few um, areas, or most areas could be getting a good sort of depending on exactly the intensity of the precipitation, but it could give quite a bit of rain in a few areas over the course of a day or two before we go back drier again uh, with big high pressure building in. You can see that on the pressure charts, massive high pressure system building in, the flow coming in from the east northeast. So it's not going to be amazingly warm, but it'll be dry and temperatures will be generally around average, if not slightly above average with quite strong early August sunshine. So... If we just have a look at the example from this GFS operational run at the precipitation from uh, the U uh, by having a look at the GFS run. Again, the GFS run at this range will definitely overdo the precipitation a bit. So do take this with a bit of a pinch of salt. But it does generally show us areas of precipitation risk, at least at the time of the run. And it will give us the intensity as well that is likely in that location. So again, not exactly. It's not going uh, to rain everywhere where we're seeing blue on this chart. But it does give us a good idea. Again, we'll have to have, uh, have a look at this on the short range models when it comes into the five day time frame. But we won't be seeing that for maybe two, three, four days time um, for early August if we do see this low pressure continue to develop. So you can see as we had through the first couple of days of August, there are showers around, but nothing too intense. It turns drier through the first and the second of August. So you can see through the afternoon of the 2nd of August, we do start to see that heavier precipitation approach with that low pressure system. You can see some intense areas of precipitation, those greens and yellows popping up, showing convective showers, um, heavier bands of rain and thunder activity potentially with that torrential rainfall. Again, you can see it's not in a massive line. We're seeing or a massive little clump of rainfall, a lot of pop up areas of more intense precipitation so it's likely to be convective in nature so some areas will miss out on the intense precipitation but the widespread nature of this would mean quite a few areas would get soaking and as again that would point towards convective thundery sort of nature of this rain it does move through and it continues to be quite intense for many areas sweeping northwards giving some very heavy precipitation for eventually clearing out to our east and then things go a little bit drier again through uh, next go through in just over a week's time turning back drier again so intense precipitation there for a day or two before things turn dry again and then this is why it will, it's likely just to be one single event they're not seeing complete end to this dry period but one sort of rogue low pressure system could be breaking this down at least for a period of time giving us some more heavier precipitation in the form of potentially some quite thundery conditions so if we do now have a look at the GM run, see how that does compare in terms to, uh, in regards to the GFS, just so we can see whether we're seeing a similar low pressure system develop there in around eight days' time. You can see high pressure in control at the moment, low pressure running in off the Atlantic, giving us that precipitation further northwards, high pressure building back in, and then you can see these sliding lows around the 2nd, 3rd of August. Position slightly further northwards, so it still would give its intense precipitation, but, prob but probably would be more frontal as it's more of a sort of Atlantic system with less hot air getting wrapped around into it, you can see that hot air stays to our south more, so it would be less uh, convective, uh, and it would be more likely to be just some heavier precipitation, uh, in sort of in, in frontal form further northwards, and the south would probably remain quite warm and dry. Again, if we have a look at the uh, that on the United Kingdom look, you can see for southern areas, through this period, it would be mid to high 20s. Further northwards, we see the precipitation again. We have a look at the precipitation on the HD. You can see, yes, some frontal rainfall moving in the south, but nothing significant. Most of that heavier precipitation is further northward. So it would give a bit of precipitation, but nothing as significant as the GFS run. So if you have a look at the ECMWF, see how that does compare. Again, high pressure building in at the moment, that low moving through over the next few days, giving some heavier precipitation towards the end of this week. Another small little low could be moving there through Sunday, could give a bit more precipitation, but nothing too crazy. Before we see another low sweep through around the 3rd, 4th of August, potentially a bit further northwards, which would again give the precipitation across more, Scot more of Scotland, Northern Ireland, and Northern England. But we can see another little low pressure systems out in the Atlantic. So I do think we're going to see this sort of system come off. We're going to be seeing some sort of southerly tracking low, giving us some heavier precipitation, some thunderstorms. But 
the exact timings and exact positionings still yet to be determined. And this really is well reflected by having a look at the ensembles. You can see cool in the average at the moment, turning above average quite consistently through the last day or two of July and through the first sort of three to five days of August. And you can see around that second, third of August mark, we're seeing an increased amount of precipitation. Small spikes are likely convective in nature. Of course, the ensembles are not going to pick up on convection too well at this distance. So showing quite a few precipitation spikes, so a lot of instability, precipitation um, with that. Above average conditions, that points towards one thing, heavy uh, showers and thunderstorms with this and it will likely be associated with that low pressure system beyond that though temperatures are more around average precipitation does drop so it's not end to this dry spell but it could be a brief little break we could be seeing at the start of august and we can see it well reflected by having a look at these sea level pressure you can see a dip of in pressure around the third and the fourth of august which would uh, as i said give some heavier precipitation in the south. Again, the GFS run has it, has it on the lower end, so that positioning of the low much further southwards than the other runs, but there's still low pressure around further southwards, much more lower than we have in the moment. So even if we don't see a direct hit from the low pressure in the south, it would give us enough instability, enough low pressure to sit, at least see some of that weather front smooth through, or at least heavy thundery showers break out with that warmer air that does try and get wafted up from the south. If we do compare this to the ECMWF midnight run, again, pretty similar, warmer than average conditions through that end of July, early August period, and increased precipitation for around the 1st to the 5th of August. So a bit more delayed in terms of timings, but still quite a strong signal of seeing precipitation, at least convective of nature precipitation, returning. See a few precipitation spikes in the next day or two, and that's because we're seeing a lot of those showers, just rash of showers breaking out, but more uh, persistent and bigger precipitation spikes through that first five days of August. So I'll just have to keep an eye on it. Again, this would be nothing too much to talk about in normal circumstances where we're seeing precipitation um, quite often. But since it's been so dry, this sort of precipitation where it could dump quite a bit of rain across a day or two in terms in regards to thundery activity and heavier precipitation in, in, in some thundery showers as said um it is quite a big deal so that's why we're concentrating on quite a lot but we'll just have to see how it does develop but there will still plenty uh, be plenty of dry weather from now until then and most likely afterwards as well just can't say exactly the shape of this after the next five days as there is of course a lot of uncertainty as ever with the models at that time frame so anyway thanks for watching Hope you have enjoyed. Hopefully we do see some precipitation because I know a lot of people in the south are going to get uh, pretty frustrated or at least already frustri fr very frustrated with the lack of rainfall at the moment. The grass is getting very brown uh, and we are already hearing talks of drought conditions and hose pipe bans in the next maybe month or two if this does continue. And if we don't see rainfall over the next a uh, couple of months and it stays below average it will be next summer where we do really get the impacts we also have to look in the longer term as well so hopefully we do see some proper precipitation coming up over the next week or two and we do generally see more of an unsettled outlook through august still with our fair share of warmer dry weather but we do still want to see some precipitation whether it's in the form of frontal rainfall or some thundery outbreaks uh, we do definitely need the precipitation so anyway thanks for watching as i said hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon.